Hey guys, welcome back to Tech Wizard channel. Uh, well, with all the problems I had in my personal life, uh, I had no other choice than leave the channel behind for a while while uh, I fo uh, focus on my situation and fix my things up. So it's a little beginning. Well, not uh, a big project like I usually do, but at least it's a start. So this uh, video series is about uh, my personal computer build. Uh, it's gonna be a three-part series. One, uh, the first one, uh, I'm assembling the uh, motherboard. The second one will be uh, installing the motherboard on the case and connecting everything up. And the third video gonna be about uh, installing Windows and um, drivers for uh, an AMD based uh, system. So, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. If you have uh, any comments or uh, suggestions about future videos, then uh, you can write them down in the comment section or go at the, the Facebook group and shout out some ideas there. So without further ado, let's get to part one, the motherboard assembly. First part is the assembly of the motherboard. Put that away. And here we go. So I have bought an Aorus B450 Pro Wi-Fi. Nice little ITX board. Super small, but still does a pretty good job. In the box, it comes with two SATA cables, a neat little PC speakers for all those uh, glorious beeps, A Wi-Fi antenna. The IO shield. It's com it comes with a kind of a foamy padding behind. That's neat. The motherboard manual. Seat, a driver CD ROM, and that two screws and risers. And a nifty looking little badge. That's cool. I love those simple things. Okay. A good thing to do when you're assembling a new computer, uh, when you do the motherboard, use the motherboard box as a tray, put everything on. As at least you're gonna be sure that you're not damaging the uh, PCB trays, and all that. Uh, Super fragile stuff. So. 
Now, the CPU. For this build, I got a Ryzen 3 CPU. Let's, let me zoom in. There we go. It's a 2200G with a, an integrated uh, Vigo 8 graphics. Vigo 8 or Vigo 11. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Anyway. Here we have the cooler. And normally this cooler comes with thermal paste pre-applied but because I bought that CPU used and uh, there's no more on it. Yeah. The CPU itself. Like I said earlier, I bought it used, so I don't have a badge. But at least the CPU is there. Here we go. So, inserting the CPU on a AMD AM4 platform motherboard is pretty st straightforward. You have the retention arm here, you push it there, then you lift the arm and the socket will unlatch. Next, take your CPU, then you're gonna see right here Not sure my camera will focus. Okay, here. There's a golden triangle. And this triangle always match the one on your motherboard. And for me, uh, it's right about here. I'm gonna zoom the camera. Focus is not super great. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Okay, so the little triangle is there. And another hint is that it's missing one pin on that corner compared to the other ones. So if you flip your CPU. You're gonna see the golden triangle. There's a pin missing here. So here we go. Drop the CPU in. It will align by itself. You don't need to push on it or wiggle it. It will just drop in place. Then you take the retention arm and you fold it right down. And the CPU is now secured and ready to rock. Now for the heatsink itself. As you can see this heatsink is using screws there's no way you can physically attach this heat sink to the motherboard with the original uh, mounting options there 
Those mounting clamps are for the older style CPU heatsink. I have one right here to show you the difference. Oh, it's in AMD 200GE that comes with a clamp style. So, those clamps normally attach right here on the CPU clamps there we go so that's the older style uh, clip on AMD heat sinks but mine didn't come with that clamp system so put that away and I gotta have to remove the two plastic brackets to install my CPU heatsink. There we go, we don't need these anymore. And now, the CPU heatsink will fit. I'm gonna go grab thermal paste and apply it on top of the seat. Okay. Now, the thermal paste. Because I do a lot of computer here, well, I buy them in bulk and I use uh, one of these uh, plastic spudgers and there's a lot of way to apply thermal, pa thermal paste like uh, putting just a, a, a grain of rice sized dot in the middle and let it spread by itself but personally I do it this way. That's gonna be way enough. Time to install the heat sink. My CPU fan in there is here, so I think I'm just gonna mount it right away. There we go. And when you screw a CPU heat sink, never screw one by one completely tight. Try to do an X pattern and on the first run just make a couple of turns on the four screws And after that, you tie them all the way down. Now my heat sink is secured. To connect 
the fan heater right here. It's the gray one here. I have a lot of extra cable length, so just do kind of a knot and connect it. There we go. As for the RAM. Got a G skill set of uh, DDR4 memory. It's uh, 2133 megahertz. Uh, 2400, sorry. It's not the fastest, but should get the job done. There we go. Well, if you notice, there's a notch, and it's not completely in the middle. Pull back the retention arm and as you can see it's not on the right side because the knot is here. If you flip your ram over and you check it out. And it match. Press down your RAM until it clicks on both sides and you give it a little wiggle just to be sure that everything is in place. Same for the second stick. Align it in the slot, push it down, and here we go. Little bit of a wiggle. It's all tied down and installed. Next order of business. Ooh, it's shiny. Okay. Camera reflection. My M.2 drive. For this build, I have a 500 gigabyte 970 Evo made by Samsung. This motherboard comes with a M.2 heat spreader. Remove the screw just about here. lift the heat spreader and you have the M.2 connector right here and for people who's asking themselves why do you have like three holes well hole and other studs it's because this motherboard accept 2242, 2240, and 2280 M.2 SSDs. Mine is a 2280, so I don't have any extra hardware to install on the motherboard. And as for hardware, I'm speaking about those little screws and standoffs that came with the motherboard so the M.2 is inserted just give it a gentle wiggle until it's not going further in the connector and push it down be sure that it's perfectly aligned with the stud here and it's all good. Now I'm gonna put back my heat spreader. This is kind of a bit complicated because you have to hold down the end dot two and then push down the heat spreader. There's not much of room to play with. Okay. 
game. Back the screw. So, the basic parts of the motherboard are assembled. And because it's a 2200G, I have a graphics card integrated. So, before installing the motherboard inside of my case, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook the power supply on the motherboard and test it out using the uh, internal um, graphics HDMI and display port just to be sure that the motherboard boots and everything is fine. Now the power supply. A lot of people get scared about disconnecting some of the cables and all of this wiring harness, but seriously, there's nothing to be scared of. You cannot connect a cable the wrong way, it will not fit and you cannot connect a cable that doesn't go where it, it's supposed to be if you look carefully all the connectors are keyed so you cannot put them the wrong way at all there's only one spot that they will fit on your motherboard or your graphics card or your anything else that you would connect on your computer there's no way to be wrong so, as I said earlier just gonna connect the power supply real quick to be sure that everything is working fine before I put the motherboard inside of the case so the main motherboard connection is there and you have the CPU power delivery connector just here Connect my cables in here we go and put my power cable on my power supply be sure that my switch is at the on position and not the off otherwise you're gonna be scared for nothing put this mess a little bit away then I'm gonna bring my little 7 inch the screen and hook it up to the HDMI port because if you remember this motherboard uh, the CPU I have in is a 2200G and the G stands for graphics so I don't need to put a dedicated GPU on the PCIe slot here to test that everything works fine. Now on the motherboard manual you have the front panel connector here on the motherboard and I gotta check in the book to see what is the pinout of the front panel connector TPU connector system fan RGB let's strip power delivery SATA ah, here we go so my power switch goes to pin uh, 10, 9, 8, 10, 6 so pin 8 and 6 
I don't really recommend that but I'm gonna use the tip of my screwdriver to short just those pins Focus the camera. Okay, I'm gonna short those two pins using my screwdriver to power the motherboard on. I just touch it, and here we go. It should do. Oh, and yeah, it has an RGB strip. Uh, it can take some time for the first boot because the BIOS gonna set it up for the CPU, the voltage, the RAM you have on that kit. So don't be scared if it takes a couple of seconds to have a video output. Here we go. It's booting. Ah, yeah, and I already had uh, uh, Windows pre-installed on that M.2 drive. But at least it's working. So now I can continue and disconnect the power supply and put that little super nice motherboard inside of my too much big case. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, please uh, do not forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Uh, leave comments on the video below if you have any ideas or things that you want me to check out. Also, there's the uh, Tech Wizard the DIY channel, uh, not channel, but group on Facebook. Uh, if you have any other ideas or uh, comments, well, just put them here. And uh, well, again, thanks for uh, watching this video and see you soon, guys and girls on part two the case assembly thanks and goodbye